Well, let's uh, talk about the importance of initial velocity for integrating. So the importance of knowing di. Right, we talked a little bit about this person and uh, just gonna follow up with some instruction. I have some other uh, integrating videos, make sure that you've watched those. But really the key here is with integrating is knowing the I. Now, truthfully, you can know any velocity along the data set, but it's always easier to start with initial velocity being zero. All right, so uh, let's see, actually I didn't wanna start with this plot, but that's okay, I will. Um, all right, so we are always going to be going from acceleration to velocity and from velocity to position. So I'll stack my plots like this. I always do position, velocity, acceleration. And then if we're doing something like ground reaction force, I'd have a, another plot down here. If you're in a math class or even a physics class, sometimes you flip these and uh, you integrate here and then you plot down here. But I'm gonna continue with this mindset an approach that we have where we integrate acceleration to yield velocity, and then we integrate velocity to yield uh, position. All right, so let's go through this. I may have to do a couple plots here. Let's just start with a really simple acceleration profile. Like that. Okay. Let's just say it's that simple. Square wave, all right, and this is zero here, obviously goes up to this point, goes over to this point, and then down to this point. So this would be T1, this would be T2, this would be A1, and this would be A2. We'll just label them that way. Let's say we wanna integrate. What is integrate? It's calculating the area under this curve. Well, I've got a nice square wave here. So the area under the curve is equal to base times height, a rectangle. In this case, the base is delta T and the height is A1 and A2, okay? In this case, the, what I've done is I've used the same height for both this point and this point, All right? So the height of this rectangle, I can just use A1 or I could use A2. So I'll do the base delta T times A1. I'll just do A1 there, oops, sorry. All right, so that's the area. <clears throat> well, what you want to do, uh, well, let's just look, let's do unit analysis. What are the units for delta T? Unit uh, for delta T or S, what are the units for acceleration? Meters per second squared. So what are the units that result from this? One of the seconds in the denominator get canceled out by the seconds in the numerator. So I get meters per second, which are units for velocity. And maybe you recognize right away that this equation right here is really the equation A equals delta V over delta T. So running out of room there already. Or really, let's just rearrange this so it looks like that. Delta V equals A delta T. All right, so here's the critical equation. What this is saying is the change in velocity is equal to the product of the height of this rectangle times the width of this rectangle. That's integrating. We're integrating this figure, this curve, to get information about velocity. Well, all we've gotten so far is delta V equals A delta T, or VF minus VI equals A delta T. All right, so now, how do I put data up here if this is what I know? And I can't. All I can say is the change in velocity is equal to the area under this curve, the change in velocity. 
whatever it is, the change in velocity is equal to the area under that curve. So that means if I start initial velocity here at zero, now I can calculate VF. Oh, I messed up that. Let's, VF equals A delta T plus, plus VI. Final velocity, if this is initial velocity, or I could have called that T1 or V1, the final velocity or T2, excuse me, V2 is gonna be equal to A1, sorry, I'll keep that one in there, A1 times delta T, the width of this, plus the initial velocity, which in this case is I set to zero. So um, that's positive. So acceleration is positive. So I know this is going to be like that. The uh, yeah, yeah, I did that. But that's only because I started if vi equals zero meters per second. Well, what if vi is equal to negative one meter per second? Well, I start down here. Negative one. The change in velocity is going to be positive. All right? The final velocity or the velocity at T2 is going to be equal to A1 times delta T plus initial velocity, which in this case is negative one. So it's going to look something like that. Now, it just happens to be going to zero the way I've drawn this, but it doesn't need to go to zero. This is a change in velocity. Delta V. This is the same delta V. So now you can see if I take any initial velocity here, I can still, I'll know the change in velocity. So it could be that, it could be that, it could be any of those. It could be down here, it could be down here. Oh, all those are parallel lines, okay? The difference between all of these and which one is it for this that matches with this acceleration profile, I need to know initial velocity. I need to know that. If I don't know initial velocity, I don't know which one of these plots corresponds with this because all of those plots, all those parallel lines will be exactly that delta V that results from integrating that acceleration profile. You have to know, and now let's take it a step further. This is upward movement. This is speeding up, moving upwards, speeding up, moving upwards, speeding up, moving upwards, slowing down, moving downwards, slowing down, moving downwards, slowing down, moving downwards. Slowing down, moving downward, speeding up, moving upwards. Or slowing down, moving downwards lots, speeding up, moving upwards just a little bit. So very different position plots based upon all these different, and the possibilities are infinite, all these in, uh, initial velocities. So which one of these lines matches with this I don't know unless it's, it, 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 I have to know I can't pick this line without knowing that initial velocity. Or likewise, if I knew the final velocity, now you can see I could work backwards because I would have one unknown. If I know that, if I know that and I know that, I can solve for that. If I know this, I know this and this, I, I need one unknown to be able to solve this equation. And as long as I know a velocity somewhere along the way, I can actually work in either direction uh, to integrate uh, the curve or integrate um, this curve to yield velocity data. Okay, so uh, messy notes. Um, so you need to know initial velocity. All right, uh, I'm going. I'm going to end this video there, and then I'll do another one for uh, some more integrating information. Okay, thanks.